François Canet French, FSWA Cain, the 4th of June 1694 to the 16th of December 1774, was a French economist and physician of the physiocratic school. He is known for publishing the Tableau économique, economic table in 1758, which provided the foundations of the ideas of the physiocrats. This was perhaps the first work attempting to describe the workings of the economy in an analytical way, and as such can be viewed as one of the first important contributions to economic thought. His Le Despotisme de la Chine, written in 1767, describes Chinese politics and society, and his own political support for constitutional oriental despotism. Life Cainet was born at Marais near Versailles, the son of an advocate and small landed proprietor. Apprenticed at the age of 16 to a surgeon, he soon went to Paris, studied medicine and surgery there, and, having qualified as a master surgeon, settled down to practice at Mance. In 1737 he was appointed perpetual secretary of the Academy of Surgery founded by François Gigot de la Peroni, and became surgeon in ordinary to King Louis XV. In 1744 he graduated as a doctor of medicine, he became physician in ordinary to the king, and afterwards his first consulting physician, and was installed in the Palace of Versailles. His apartments were on the Entrezol, whence the Réunions de l'Entrezol received their name. Louis XV esteemed Cainet highly, and used to call him his thinker. When he ennobled him he gave him for arms three flowers of the pansy derived from ponce, in French meaning thought, with the Latin motto propter cogitationum mentis, he now devoted himself principally to economic studies, taking no part in the court intrigues which were perpetually going on around him. Around 1750 he became acquainted with Jacques C.M.V. de Gournay who was also an earnest inquirer in the economic field, and round these two distinguished men was gradually formed the philosophic sect of the Economistes, or, as for distinction's sake they were afterwards called, the Physiocrates. The most remarkable men in this group of disciples were the elder Mirabeau, author of Lamy des Hommes, 1756-60, and Philosophie Rural, 1763, Nicolas Bodo, Introduction à la Philosophie Économique, 1771, G. F. Le Trosny, De l'Ordre Social, 1777, André Morellet, best known by his controversy with Galliani on the freedom of the grain trade during the Flower War, Mercier Larivière, and Dupont de Namur. Adam Smith, during his stay on the continent with the young Duke of Buccleuch in 1764–1766, spent some time in Paris, where he made the acquaintance of Canet and some of his followers. He paid a high tribute to their scientific services in his wealth of nations. Canet married in 1718, and had a son and a daughter. His grandson by the former was a member of the First Legislative Assembly. He died on 16 December 1774, having lived long enough to see his great pupil, Anne Robert Jacques Turgot, Baron de Laun, in office as Minister of Finance. Works His economic writings are collected in the second volume of the Principo Economistes, published by Guillaumin, Paris, with preface and notes by Eugène Dira. Also his oeuvres économiques et philosophiques were collected with an introduction and note by August Onken Frankfurt, 1888. A facsimile reprint of the Tableau Économique, from the original Ms., was published by the British Economic Association London, 1895. His other writings were the article, Evidence in the Encyclopédie, and Recherches sur l'évidence des vérités géométriques, with a projet de nouveau élements de géométrie, 1773. Canet's éloge was pronounced in the Academy of Sciences by Grandjean de Fauci see the recul of that academy, 1774, p. 134. See also F.J. Marmontel, Memoirs, Memoirs de me, du Houset, H. Higgs, The Physiocrats London, 1897. Topic. Economics In 1758 he published the Tableau Economique economic table, which provided the foundations of the ideas of the physiocrats. This was perhaps the first work to attempt to describe the workings of the economy in an analytical way, and as such can be viewed as one of the first important contributions to economic thought. The publications in which Canet expounded his system were the following, two articles, on Fermiers. Farmers and on grains, 
In the Encyclopédie of Diderot and Jean La Ronde d'Alembert (1756–1757), a discourse on the law of nature in the Physiocratie of Dupont de Nemours (1768), Maximes Générales de Gouvernement Économique d'une Royaume Agricole (1758), and the simultaneously published Tableau Économique avec son explication, O extrait des économies royales de Sully, with the celebrated motto: Pauvres paysans, pauvre royaume, pauvre royaume, pauvre roi. Dialogue sur la commerce et les travaux des artisans, and other minor pieces, the tableau économique, though on account of its dryness and abstract form it met with little general favor, may be considered the principal manifesto of the school. It was regarded by the followers of Cane as entitled to a place amongst the foremost products of human wisdom, and is named by the elder Mirabeau, in a passage quoted by Adam Smith, as one of the three great inventions which have contributed most to the stability of political societies, the other two being those of writing and of money. Its object was to exhibit by means of certain formulas the way in which the products of agriculture, which is the only source of wealth, would in a state of perfect liberty be distributed among the several classes of the community namely, the productive classes of the proprietors and cultivators of land, and the unproductive class composed of manufacturers and merchants, and to represent by other formulas the modes of distribution which take place under systems of governmental restraint and regulation, with the evil results arising to the whole society from different degrees of such violence relations of the natural order. It follows from Keynes's theoretic views that the one thing deserving the solicitude of the practical economist and the statesman is the increase of the net product, and he infers also what Smith afterwards affirmed, on not quite the same ground, that the interest of the landowner is strictly and indissolubly connected with the general interest of the society. A small edition deluxe of this work, with other pieces, was printed in 1758 in the Palace of Versailles under the king's immediate supervision, some of the sheets, it is said, having been pulled by the royal hand. Already in 1767 the book had disappeared from circulation, and no copy of it is now procurable, but, the substance of it has been preserved in the Ami des Hommes of Mirabeau, and the Physiocratie of Dupont de Nemours. Orientalism and China. Kane is known for his writings on Chinese politics and society. His book Le Despotisme de la Chine, written in 1767, describes his views of the Chinese imperial system. He was supportive of the meritocratic concept of giving scholars political power, without the cumbersome aristocracy that characterized French politics, and the importance of agriculture to the welfare of a nation. The phrase laissez-faire, coined by fellow physiocrat Vincent de Gournay, is postulated to have come from Kane's writings on China. Gregory Blue writes that Kane "...praised China as a constitutional despotism and openly advocated the adoption of Chinese institutions, including a standardized system of taxation and universal education." Blue speculates that this may have influenced the 1793 establishment of the permanent settlement in Bengal by the British Empire. Kane's interests in Orientalism has also been a source of criticism. Carol Bloom, in her book Strength in Numbers on 18th Century France, labels Kane an apologist for Oriental despotism. Because of his admiration of Confucianism, Kane's followers bestowed him with the title Confucius of Europe. Kane's infatuation for Chinese culture, as described by Jesuits, led him to persuade the son of Louis XV to mirror the plowing of sacred land by the Chinese emperor to symbolize the link between government and agriculture. See also Contributions to liberal theory History of economic thought Liberalism Ronald L. Meek Notes References Hobson, John M. 2004, the Eastern Origins of Western Civilization, Cambridge University Press, ISBN 0-521-54724-5 External links Works by or about François Quesnay at Internet Archive Le Despotisme de la Chine 1767 by François Quesnay, hosted on the University of Massachusetts website François Quesnay The Concise Encyclopedia of Economics. Library of Economics and Liberty 2nd ed. 
Liberty Fund, 2008.